so welcome back to my channel. So before you click out of this video if you are not vegan, I know that there's a few things I'm gonna say that may sound like I'm trying to hate on anyone that's not vegan, but that is not the case. The sole purpose of why I'm making this video is to try to educate others and make you possibly think in a way you haven't before. I know before I went vegan, I hadn't even thought about anything that I'm gonna say right now. So please just hear me out. Then afterward, you can make any decision you want. All I hope is that people become more educated of the reality of what's really going on in the world. So I've been vegan for about three or four months now. I'm pretty new at everything. It's it's not like I've been vegan for years and years, but it's changed my entire life and I can guarantee you I'm never going back. I'm never going to eat meat again, never going to eat dairy. This is a part of my life. I know it's only been a short amount of time, but this has changed my life and I love it. So there's a lot of different reasons people become vegan. The reason I started thinking about becoming vegan was all the moral reasons behind it. I knew obviously that animals were killed to eat. That's obviously where burgers come from, chicken, all that stuff. But I didn't know to the extent of how much torture they were being put through. Not just being shot in the head and killed really quick, they were being tortured. So I started realizing this when people started going crazy in the US because of the dog meat industries in other countries. I obviously don't agree with that. I don't think any animal should be tortured. But a lot of people that ate meat here were going kind of crazy about that. And that was my first instinct too. I used to obviously eat burgers and chicken nuggets and all that kind of stuff and I heard about the dog meat industries and I'm like oh my god that's awful why are they torturing the animals that's so inhumane all this stuff and then I realized the exact same thing is happening here it's just not to dogs or cats or animals that we kind of put on a higher level just because we have them as pets more often than cows and pigs and things like that. But I realized that the same exact thing is happening here, that animals are actually being tortured, not just killed, just like the dogs in other countries. So in reality, the reason I actually started considering being vegan was that whole instance, plus reading a lot of stuff from vegans on Twitter. And I know Twitter is very political and talks about societal issues and all that kind of stuff. And so yeah, there are a lot of vegans that are very pushy on things, but I started looking at the facts they were presenting and doing just a tiny bit of research and stuff like that and just looking at what they were saying and it all just made sense to me. Like it was common sense type of things that they were saying. It wasn't like some random facts that they had no source to and no evidence behind it. It was like common sense type of things and I was like, this makes sense, you know? And from reading all of that, I realized that I really had no excuse not to be vegan. There were three excuses I always came up with, like when people would ask why I ate meat or just asking myself why I still did this if I know it's so inhumane. And there were the three excuses that I always said in my mind. The first excuse was that I wasn't gonna be able to get enough protein because I work out a lot, I wanna gain muscle, all that stuff, and I was like, uh, I'm not gonna get enough protein with it. The second excuse was that it's just too hard. Like I'm not gonna be able to find anything to eat. I'm gonna have to just eat like lettuce all the time, or <laughs> like all just vegetables. And it's gonna be too hard when I go out and things like that. The third excuse was that I just like meat too much. Like I eat it with every single meal and snack and I'm never gonna be able to get it out of my life. Like it's a part of what I eat every single day. So then I really dug into all of that and like thought in my mind, why do I have these excuses and are they actually valid or not? Then I came up with so many reasons on how they're not valid at all, that these are purely just excuses. They are not facts. They should not guide the way I live my life. They should not guide what I eat. So this is why my excuses are not valid. My first excuse where I can't get enough protein with being vegan, it just logically clicked to me that where's all the protein coming from in the cows and the pigs and the chickens that I'm eating? Where's all that protein coming from? It's coming from the plants that those animals eat. So why don't I just eat those plants? Also, I used to think that for muscle growth and for just maintaining a very healthy lifestyle and gaining those muscles, my body needed 100 plus grams of protein a day. That's always what I've heard you need as much as like your body weight is in pounds, but in grams of protein. I thought you needed so much. I used to eat 130 grams plus 
a protein every single day, all from animal products. And then I realized, I did a tiny bit of research and realized there's so many vegan bodybuilders out there. And I was like, how are they getting that much protein, you know? And then I found out and actually tested it on myself, basically, that you don't need that much protein. You will get the exact same results and build the exact same amount of muscles with less protein. Now being vegan, I, I haven't really counted exactly how much protein I have per day, but I'm saying maybe around 50 to 60 grams or so. It's not that much and it's way less than I ever thought I'd need to gain muscle. But ever since I've been vegan, I've actually been gaining more muscle than I have before when I was eating so, so much protein every single day. So it really doesn't matter. You don't need that much protein in reality and people think you do and people push that on you, but you really don't. So my second excuse that it would be too difficult to do is totally invalid because yes, it in reality is more difficult than just eating whatever you want. Obviously that's common sense, but I looked up a few just simple vegan recipes and mind you that I don't actually cook that much. Like I'm not looking up extravagant recipes that are expensive or like have 20 different ingredients in them. I was looking up just simple things and I'm like, oh, I never thought of that, but that's so simple, it's so cheap. It's really easy. And nowadays it's super easy to find things out when you're going out to restaurants and stuff that are vegan than before, that like 10 years ago or something. There's so many restaurants that have veggie burgers or black bean burgers. You can always get fries or chips when you're out. Those are mostly vegan for the most part. There's some chips that aren't, but you know what I'm saying. So I started making like bean salad type of things. I started, I bought this like vegan bacon that tastes exactly like bacon when it's in stuff. So I made like BLTs and things like that. And it doesn't have to be bland. You're not gonna eat just raw vegetables every day. I don't even like raw vegetables really. Like I, I know I'm a health freak, but I really don't enjoy them that much. Like there's a few like cucumbers I like and stuff like that, but I couldn't do it if all I was eating every day was just raw vegetables or Whatever, like I'm eating so many different things and it's so good and I don't miss meat or dairy at all. Like I have not craved it one little bit. And I truly think that you just need to get used to it for a few weeks and then easy peasy lemon squeezy. So my third excuse was that I just like meat and dairy too much. I eat it with everything. So let me give you a little bit of background info. A lot of people that, at least from my point of view that I've seen that are vegan or vegetarian have told me that they don't necessarily like meat that much in the first place, that they, they could already see themselves going without it. Like maybe they used to have it with meals, but they could be like, eh, I, I could do without it. That's not the case with me. I literally could not go without meat. If you would have asked me six months ago, if I could even just stop eating chicken for one month, where that's one type of meat, so not even other meats, and for a limited amount of time for one month, I would have told you, no way, what the heck, you're crazy, I could never do that. And I didn't even eat chicken that much, but like, I feel like, I just could not do it. That's what I always told myself because I incorporated meat and dairy in every single meal I had. So if I couldn't even do that, then being vegan was completely out of the picture. Like unrealistic. And I didn't even eat meat just for the protein. I ate it for the taste. Like I loved it. And I mean for the protein too, cause I thought I needed a lot more than I actually did. But it was mostly for the taste. Like I enjoyed meat so much. It was my favorite food, like chicken nuggets my favorite thing, bacon, my favorite thing. I love bacon so much that I have t-shirts that say I heart bacon and magnets with bacon on it. Like I was obsessed. <laughs> so what stopped me from eating all that and when I told myself, hey, I could actually do this, is when I did the most minimal research ever, like I just educated myself. And I think that's the base of why a lot of people aren't vegan yet, because they don't know anything. I'm not trying to say you guys are dumb, you're not at all, like I was the exact same way, but just educate yourself like little by little on small things and it makes a huge difference. So, and I'm not saying research things, like I did not ever sit down, read articles or go take a class or any like hard work, like not what you'd consider like research, you know? I never did that. I literally just scrolled through Twitter, read some things, I talked to a few people I knew and logically just things made sense to me. Then I started thinking like, I consider myself a good person, you know? I want to do good in this world, I want to make a change. I care about the environment and societal issues and I honestly like think of myself as a very morally right person. Like I want to do right for people. And then after reading 
things about people that are vegan and why they are, then I realized how selfish I was being by literally buying into companies that torture animals and I eat their flesh for pure enjoyment. I realized that I can't call myself a good person to humanity and to the world and the environment if I'm contributing to this. Like if you're truly genuine about wanting to be a good person in the world, and I'm not saying people that aren't vegan are bad people, I'm not trying to say that, but like in terms of humanity and the environment, like things like that, if you consider yourself like a genuine, truly good person in that aspect, this is something you need to do too. <laughs> and again, I'm not trying to say like, you guys are stupid if you eat meat or anything. It's just that I think you need to learn more about it and learn why you're putting things in your body if you don't know much about it. Like, like research some stuff, educate yourself. And that's why I'm trying to give you just some facts here and there. This is all kind of my opinion, but I'm gonna get into like statistics and facts about what like switched me over other than just like, moral reasons. So all in all, if I can be vegan, where I was someone who ate meat and cheese with every single meal and never even considered not eating even one of those things sometimes or whatever, I, I like was obsessed with all types of meat. I loved it so much. If I can do that, you can too. So now I wanna make it clear that I'm not trying to force anyone to be vegan. Please don't unsubscribe from my channel because you think, oh my God, she's so pushy. I'm not trying to do that. I'm one, trying to educate you guys. And two, I understand completely that there's some circumstances where somebody can't be vegan all the time. Like I understand that there are individuals who can't, but I'm talking to the ones who can even once in a while. Also, I understand that if I'm trying to make a change in this world, nothing's gonna happen, nobody's gonna listen to me if I'm just forcing things onto you. So please realize that these are my opinions. Yes, I'm very passionate about this right now, but that I'm not trying to like force you and I'm not saying, ah, oh, I'm not gonna be friends with you because you're not vegan. Like I, almost all my friends eat like meat all the time. And like, I just want them to know what's going on, why you're putting stuff in your body, like what you're doing to the environment. Like I just want to educate everyone. So please just know that. And after watching this video, you can decide what's morally right. And it's true that this is a huge change. Like even for me from eating every animal product known to like not eating anything, you know, eating just all vegan. It's a huge change. So like try to make just slow changes. Start with doing meatless Mondays where you, even if you just have dairy that day still, like just don't have meat that day. Or try to like once or twice a week replace one meal with something vegan. And you may think that you, an individual, making small changes once a week won't do that much to the world. But chances are if you're thinking about doing that, others are too. And if every single person or even half the people in the world or even a quarter of anyone, like if everyone that wasn't already vegan made just a tiny change every week or so, it would make such a huge impact on the world. And if you think replacing one or two meals during a week, not even whole days of being vegan, but just a meal once or twice a week is just too unrealistic. Sorry, this is gonna sound rude, but you have some reality checking to do because it's not hard. Anyone can do that. Like I get if you can't be vegan 100% of the time or even half the time, but once a week, like that's, it's not hard and you're lying to yourself if you say you can't do that. It just sounds stupid. Sorry, but it's true. And if you still think after hearing that that you still can't replace one or two meals a week with something vegan, then you don't care about the environment and animals, anything that much. Like, you really don't if you're not willing to actually be a part of the change that needs to happen. Every single person, no matter their family life, no matter their income, no matter how much they work out, things like that, everyone can replace a meal or two a week. Everyone can make a small change in their life. Everyone can. Even like pasta is cheap. Pasta, most of the time, is vegan. Fruits and vegetables that are in season at local farmers markets or in various grocery stores and stuff can be really cheap too. You just gotta look around do a little bit of research and see what's available to you. Put beans or nuts in different recipes or salads and or just eat them whatever to add more protein. Like there's literally a solution to every excuse you have for 
still eating meat or dairy every single day. Now it's time for some interesting statistics that you may find very surprising. Okay, so globally there is enough cropland to feed 9 billion in 2050 if the 40% of all crops produced today for feeding animals were used directly for human consumption. So basically, if we started eating more plants instead of animals, we could save people's lives by being able to provide food to them instead of feeding the animals that we're going to eat anyway. It's like skipping a whole step and we could save so many more people's lives. <laughs> and remember, you're getting the exact same nutrients from the animal you're eating that you would consuming the plants that the animal ate just without the torture of the animal and without consuming all the GMOs and hormones and everything like that that the animal is eating by just eating plants. Now let's talk about fish. On average, people eat four times as much fish now than they did in 1950. There may be fewer than 100 cod over the age of 13 years in the North Sea between the UK and Scandinavia. Also, let me bring up that big fisheries don't just catch a bunch of fish that they're looking to catch. They catch a bunch of other types of fish and sea life that they don't want, so they just basically kill them for no reason. They don't even ship it off to some other place so they could eat it. They just catch a bunch of things like sharks, for example. They catch so many sharks, like when they're trying to catch cod or some other fish, and they just kill it because they don't want it and that's not the fish they were looking for, so they don't need it. Now, since I was talking about sharks, in a 2009 report, the International Union for Conservation of Nature noted that one third of open ocean sharks are threatened or nearly threatened with extinction due to overfishing. Oh my God, that's, that's insane. Did you not hear that? Oh my God, like, and okay, this is insane to me. Like, I can't even grasp what this means. Like it, so, 11,417 sharks are killed per hour. Per hour, not even per day, per year, per hour. I would think that would be per like five years, but no, per hour. Oh my God. And a lot of the sharks that are killed per hour, yeah, a couple are maybe from individuals that catch a shark or kill it or just other random ways that I can't even think about right now. But most sharks are killed from overfishing and they get trapped in the fish nets that are meant for other types of smaller fish and they get caught in it and killed. That's insane. That's unnecessary. Why are you still eating fish? That, oh my God. Okay, so now here's stuff about the environment things like that. Um, it's from a movie. It's a documentary. I believe it's either on Netflix or Hulu. I think it's Netflix. I recommend you guys watch it too. It has a lot of good information in it. And it's like, it's kind of, it's just interesting. Like, um, so it's called Cowspiracy and they have all their statistics online. So I'm going to read a few to you and they have all the sources there too. If you think I'm just lying or taking stuff from a bad source you can go check it out yourself read on it if you really think i'm dumb and don't know what i'm talking about so go look at their statistics if you're questioning me here's some of the things that they said animal agriculture is responsible for 18 percent of greenhouse gas emissions more than the combined exhaust from all transportation so we're all thinking that greenhouse gases and the emissions and whatever are all coming from cars and things like that when in reality more is coming from animal agriculture because transportation exhaust is responsible for 13 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions remember animal agriculture is 18 percent so yeah livestock and their byproducts account for at least 32,000 million tons of carbon dioxide per year or 51 percent of all worldwide greenhouse gas emissions i am shook Let's see what else they have to say. Emissions for agriculture projected to increase 80% by 2050. Oh my God. 80%, that's a lot. Oh my God. <laughs> like, ah. And energy related emissions expected to increase 20% by 2040. And okay, this one surprised me so much. US methane emissions from livestock and natural gas are nearly equal. So we're all talking about how to conserve energy and make things solar powered and things like that when 
in reality, what the gas, and, like natural gases, is affecting on the world is the same as what animal agriculture does. So to me, it's more unrealistic for everyone to go solar, for everything to be very energy efficient. And yes, we should start doing that too. Like keep making things more energy efficient, that's great. But to me, it's more realistic for people to just cut down on the amount of meat and dairy they eat. That seems a lot more realistic since they're the same thing. So if we cut down half and half on each level, then it'll make drastic changes. And cows produce 150 billion gallons of methane per day. Billions of gallons are a freaking lot. And like I kind of touched on just a second ago, converting to wind and solar power will take 20 plus years and roughly $43 trillion. So it's gonna be expensive as hell and it's gonna take a long time. Whereas if we just all slowly started cutting down on meat and dairy, it would help so much. Like, oh my God, just do it. Also, this one is insane to me too. Growing feed crops for livestock consumes 56% of water in the US. More than half the water that we have is given to livestock purely so that we can eat them or eat the products they are producing what and then 2500 gallons of water are needed to produce one pound of beef do you know how much 2500 gallons of water is i can't even picture that to produce one pound of meat people go buy a pound of meat to eat with their family that night like God, that's so much water. It's just the earth is slowly dying and we're not doing anything to help it. So many people think it's unrealistic. Oh no, like fish won't be gone by the year 2050. They actually might. Or no, we're not destroying the environment by eating meat that has nothing to do with each other. Look at the facts. It does have everything to do with each other. We're literally killing the planet. And it's just because people aren't educated on what's actually going on. Educate yourself and do what's actually morally right. Okay, so I took a second to calm down a little bit. I know I was getting a little feisty. I could go on and on about statistics and my opinion and reading you stuff, but this is already a very long video, so I'm gonna stop it now. But if you guys wanna see more of like vegan related videos, I'm gonna make some just on my own, but if you guys have any requests on maybe you want me to be more specific and go into detail about a certain thing or anything like that, then either leave a comment down below or DM me on my Instagram, fitwithcast44. So I will end this video with saying that eating more plants saves animals' lives, saves the environment, so please consider it. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe and like this video, and I will see you next time. Bye. We make our breaks if you